Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to go over some more advanced features of Docker. Uh, in a previous lesson we talked about some of the basics of Docker, but in this lesson we're going to take Docker to the next level by actually building our own Docker containers and publishing them to Docker uh, Hub. So right here we have Docker Hub or just hub.docker.com you can go to. You can sign up for a free account. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in with an account that I already have. So Joshua Hints and my fancy password there. Once you log in, you'll be presented with kind of your repositories that you have currently. You can do Docker Hub with organizations as well. I've, I've signed up kind of a Red Sky Tech organization when I, when I was playing around with it. But in this case, um, you will just choose a username and that's where kind of all of your repositories will be referenced from. So in my case, Joshua Hint slash whatever repository name I'm going to give it. So what you can do, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of create a repository. We're going to give it a name like demo. And so again, the, the path for it will be Joshua Hint slash demo. You can kind of give it a description right here. Demonstration container image. If you choose to do it in a public, it'll appear in all the Docker Hub search results, or you can choose private. However, notice that you get one private repository when you're in the free plan of Docker Hub. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to choose private and click create. And so now I have, you know, a little bit of information that I have with this container. I can see the different tags that have been there. You can have it uh, be scanned for vulnerabilities. Add a readme, which is actually really nice if you think about it when you're going to other ones like, for example, I search MySQL, Docker Container, or MariaDB. Um, the readme is actually quite helpful in understanding how it works, how you can uh, set it up, how you can run it. So um, it, it most likely is a, a .md or a markdown file. So you can follow kind of all those standards and, and making it nice and easy to understand and, and track. So there's your kind of readme file. It kind of gives information there. But now that we have this set up, we're going to actually go and create our first Docker container. I'm going to go to my terminal here. And I'm just going to create a directory called demo test. Sure, why not? Um, and go into demo. And there's nothing in there. So I, now what you kind of do is you're just going to act however you would normally run it. So if you have, if you're creating a Node.js project with maybe Express, you just kind of create your standard Express system here. If you're making a front end app, like a Create React app, you'd probably have just your standard source code um, in the sources folder. Uh, to make it easy though, I'm just going to do a quick yarn init and we're just going to call it demo test. Sure, I'll just used to calling things like server, app.js, doesn't really matter. Uh, enter, 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 and there we have it. So now we have our package JSON. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, in this demo, I'm going to make a very simple Express.js application that we can use for um, uh, basically just serving up a single web page or just all URLs, just going to say like hello world or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually yarn add Express. So our node express package that's in there and i'm going to create uh basically a server file but to do that i'm just going to kind of open this folder up in in php storm just a little bit easier for me to work with so here i have my php storm open it notice i am in windows and so it's my c drive however i'm running all of this inside my windows subsystem for linux or wsl so I'm going to actually go to that drive that's mounted, WSL, go to my home, uh, Josh, go to Red Sky, and uh, let me refresh. There we go, demo test, and trust this folder. Okay, there we have it. So we have our, our files that are over here, and I'm going to go new file, and I'll just do server.js. And so now we can basically write our, our node application right in here. And in the interest of saving time, I am going to copy in some code. 
Uh, we have our standard require imports that we have here for Express and creating our application for Express. I'm just going to do a single endpoint that is a get endpoint of slash and if you get it, uh, if you hit that endpoint you'll get this uh, hello world text beautifully sent back to you. And then we'll create our server listing on port 8081, um, just kind of print it out in our console there. So, okay, so we go back to the terminal and uh, looking at the files, we have our server JS in there and it's always good to just kind of run it, make sure it's gonna run here locally. It says it's listing on port 8081. When I go to a browser and do localhost 8081, good, we get our hello world. So the next step is we're gonna actually build this into a Docker image of our own. And we're gonna do that by creating a Docker file. So I'm gonna go back to the project and the standard for Docker files is it's usually the capital D and it's all one word, so Docker file in there. And you can notice that PHP Storm kind of puts a little D there because it recognizes that. And the way that a Docker file works is you essentially you're building layers upon layers and you kind of start off with a, a reference layer and in this case we're going to start from node as a uh, as a docker container and it's based off of the alpine operating system so i'm just going to say uh, node 16 is the latest lts at the time of this recording and alpine is a nice small little operating system um, it's usually only 100 megabytes versus doing something off of Ubuntu or Debian, which is like a gigabyte of, of space to, to kind of store your image. So we'll just start from there. Next, we're gonna set a working directory of slash app. This is where all the files essentially will be copied into um, your container, your image when it's, when it's done there. So it's kind of like your root path that you'd have inside of your container. Uh, if you want to do comments in, inside your Docker file, you can do them with uh, the hash or the pound or whatever you want to call this um, symbol. So I could say like set working directory, directory. And next we need to kind of specify the files that we want to have copied in here. And so you do that simply with the copy command and you give the relative path from where this docker file is located. So package.json I want in there, my yarn.lock I want in there, and we would just kind of do that and, and give the destination. So remember, it's still in the slash app folder, but it's uh, destination of dot slash is relative to the working directory. Um, now you can actually run commands. So uh, again, kind of when you think about building these containers, you think about all the commands that you would run in the terminal yourself if you were to just copy this code and just kind of do everything. So naturally, one of the things once we have a package JSON and a yarn lock is we actually want to do like a yarn install. So we can say yarn install or just kind of yarn by itself will install it. So we're going to just say kind of install dependencies. Uh, and finally, now we are going to um, use a keyword called expose, um, which kind of gives a hint to the Docker container that this is a port that you, you typically would want to be exposed outside of the Docker container for other people to kind of listen into. Um, and then last, we'll copy the server JS file and copy that into the working directory. And the reason why you do this in this order instead of saying, well, let's copy that, that server up there is, again, you wanna think of these as layers that are built upon each other. And when the Docker file goes to be built and executed, it's gonna take one step at a time during the build process and see, hey, has this layer changed at all? Nope, Node 16 Alpine is still the same Node 16 Alpine. Uh, did the work directory cause any changes? Nope, it's still the same work directory. Did these files change at all? Most likely your package JSON doesn't change as often as let's say the server JS file. And so in that case, uh, we wanna kind of run this as thinking of it as its own layer and the yarn that installs it, if, if these don't change, then this layer that gets created from it uh, won't change at all. But most likely our server JS file is gonna be something that will change quite often. And so all this code right up here, it can, it can use from past builds 
to, to kind of just take the layers that are already cached on your operating system and just kind of run with it and, and not do that. And so a lot of times you'll see this where your dependencies are kind of broken out outside of your kind of main code that changes kind of more frequently. And then finally, the last thing is command. So this is the command that's going to run when the Docker container is, is started. And so we're just going to run node itself and we're going to say, hey, run server.js in there. So if everything is good, we can go back to our terminal shell. Um, we can stop this, this demo running from there. And um, now we're gonna actually go ahead and build this. So um, the build command for Docker is docker build, and you wanna always give it a tag. So otherwise it, it will just kind of has a random hash of, of names and stuff like that. So we're just gonna call this demo v1, and I'm purposely gonna kind of make a mistake here, which is okay. Um, but it's, it's just fine. Uh, we'll explain that. And, uh, then you give it the directory where your Docker file is or your build context. So if you click there and hit enter, um, it's building, it's pulling in metadata from node Alpine, um, information there. You can kind of see it runs each one of these things. Again, those layers that get built on top of each other, exporting those layers, creating a SHA of the entire thing. And then it names it as a uh, demo one. Um, if I run build again, you'll see it'll run um, much faster. So it, it just kind of says, hey, nothing's changed really. These layers are all the same. Go ahead and, and rebuild it. Um, if I do a Docker images, I can see that here's our, our demo. Ignore this other stuff I was practicing earlier, but here's our demo we just created. And it was created 28 seconds ago. The size of it is 115 megabytes. Let's compare that to the MariaDB that we downloaded in our last video, where it's up to 414 megabytes for the size of, of it and what it's uh, what all those layers kind of compounded into. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to actually uh, run it. So let's go ahead and say Docker run. We're going to run it in detached mode, so it's not going to consume our console. We're going to give it a name of demo. And the image that we're running is demo colon v1. And the reason why we have to do colon is because we didn't tag it as latest. Um, by default, if you leave off the colon, it's always looking for a tag called latest. Here, I can even try it. And it'll say unable to find demo latest locally and you know couldn't find it anywhere else kind of thing. So I have to do colon v1. And there's a reason for doing this as v1 instead of latest. And I'll... I'll um, go over that in a minute, but let's go ahead and run this and so It's kind of prints out the the hash of the the image there and if I do docker ps um, I can see There's demo. It's running nine seconds ago. Let's go ahead and try to See it and if I hit refresh Nothing's happening. We're just kind of getting a loading bar and This is kind of on purpose. I wanted to show you guys um, a common mistake, which is here we have port 8081, but we did not expose that outside of the Docker container. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tear down this Docker container uh, and, and restart it with the proper port mapping. Um, the standard way that we do that is we'd say Docker stop and we give it that and then we'd say Docker RM. Uh, to remove it, but one trick I wanted to show you, if you know what you're doing, you can say Docker RM and then dash F for force demo. And I go ahead and do that and I do a Docker PS and it's gone. Even looking in PS dash all, I don't see any you know d demos in there. So now we're gonna do the correct way of Docker run dash D dash P 8081 8081 so we're exposing that port we give a name of demo and then demo v1 there we go let's see if it is running and it is it's happy so now the next step is we want to push this to our docker hub let's say we want other people to use it or um, people inside red sky or pull it down on some of our devops so we're going to kind of follow this command which is docker push and then Josh Ants, and then whatever kind of tag name we've given it. So if I run this, uh, it says, hey, I don't know what this is. I don't know what a Josh Hintz slash demo tag name is. Um, we can even change it to V1 and we'll still get the same error. And that's because 
Well, I guess it does work. <laughs> Let's see here if that actually pushed up there. Refreshing, and it did actually. So I was wrong. I was thinking that you had to tag it with Joshua Hints. Um, and, and let me show you how you would do that. Let's let's say you wanted to change the, the tag. So if we do Docker images, um, we can see here we have this, this demo there. And the, the last push was to push it up on the V1. And it must just kind of look at anything that is not uh, demo on there. Let's say we want to actually fix this issue. So uh, before I do that, let me remove um, forcefully the demo container there. Okay, what I want to do real quick is I want to remove the Docker image that is here locally. So if I do my Docker images, I can see I have demo here. So I'll say Docker image RM demo V1. There it's gone. So if I look at Docker images, it's again, I don't have it locally at all. So let's say I want to run that Docker image that I've just recently pushed up there. So I will say Docker run like we did before dash d dash p 8081 uh, 8081 give it a name of demo remote and i'm just gonna say uh joshua hints slash demo and i go to pull that and it can't find it if you notice here it's looking for demo latest and the, the common way to do this is to push up images with certain version tags on them like that v1 v2 v3 but then the last thing you do is you also tag that latest one to whatever one it is so uh, you can do that with the docker tag and uh, you'd say docker tag and you would say um, you would have that image here locally which uh, let's see if this docker images Let's, let's do a docker poll Joshua hand slash demo and let's pull down v1 actually so we pulled that one down docker images it's all good and I can say docker tag Joshua hints slash demo v1 as and I might get this order wrong so we'll just kind of uh, see Joshua hints slash demo latest docker tag docker images and so now we have the same image id is tagged in latest and v1 and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a docker push joshua hints slash demo and um latest so it pushes it up there up in the cloud it notices all those layers exist with those special hashes and so we go there so now if i do a refresh we should have v1 and we should have a latest tag um if we kind of go let's go look at our tags there we have this latest tag the digest is the same so we know it's the same same size and so now um i want to clear out just so i can prove this docker image rm joshua hints slash demo latest and v1 and so let's go and actually run directly from docker hub so we do docker run dash d dash p 8081 8081 dash dash name docker remote and joshua hints slash demo let's see if this works unable to find it locally which is okay Hey, it pulled down latest and so docker ps we see it running there we've got port 8081 exposed it's called docker remote and we come back here refresh and instantly it refreshes and it runs so um that's what i wanted to kind of show for this video uh docker build is really not that complicated um it's something as you can kind of see as i'm stumbling a little bit through uh if you don't do it every day you kind of forget but it's it's really not that hard to to build docker images i see 
red sky moving a lot more towards Docker images in the future instead of just PM2 source code deploys. Some of the ideas that they have with Docker is that we could actually build these containers and just take only the production deployment, so maybe just the output of the TypeScript compiler and make only that the Docker container, upload that to like a private uh, registry or, or container registry, and then use that for pulling down onto all of our servers. So uh, it's really nice for people who are just kind of front end developers to just be able to pull down, let's say, Docker container of our on track REST code or other kind of RESTful code that just runs locally and they can hit it. Um, so anyways, uh, Docker build, it's great. Give it a try.